Oh my god! Oh my god! It's the first time I see that in my life. This water is complete. Oh my god! It's like boiling hot. I'm in shock. Probably fast now. <laughs> I do not know. It's maybe a bit too far. Goes on the clues. Ah, oh, that's not gonna work. <laughs> I can't! I'm stuck here! Unless well, I go in the water, but I don't know. Yeah. I'll find another way. <laughs> I'm happy! We are Elena and Vincent. We have converted a 4x4 Springer van to be our home on wheels and embarked on a trip around the world. From Patagonia to Canada, over to Eastern Siberia, and back to Europe via Mongolia, Kyrgyzstan, and so much more. At least, that's the plan. And this is our diary pursuing the plan, with our experiences and observations from where we are. It is next morning and it's really cold, as you may see. Uh, but today is the day that I'll finally put my hairy body in one of these springs. And I'm very excited, because yesterday I only put my hands and I was already freaking out. <laughs> we have seen. It's really hard to take the clothes off because it's really cold. <laughs> So here in this park they have two springs, this one that is 47 degrees and one that is 36. Of course it's a Brazilian, I chose the 47 one. Okay. Very cool. Ah, uh, it's so warm, I don't think I can. Oh my god, it's so hot. It hurts. Warm we detour 300 kilometers from the 40 and drive the valley of Varvaco River north towards Volcan de Muyo, the highest peak of Patagonia. There is plenty of volcanic activity in the area, creating geysers and hot springs, which are a result of groundwater being heated up by magma below. It's a wonderful experience to enjoy a hot bath of the days on the road. In the end, a trip like this is not about arriving somewhere within time, or maybe not arriving anywhere at all. It's about letting go of plans and being open to drifting around. A process especially I have to slowly learn and be more open to. We managed to get out just in time, as big rain clouds are coming in and the fairly exposed gravel road back out of this remote valley might get slippery very soon. I'm a bit afraid here because it's too exposed and it's raining. Hmm? I got a bit nervous. Do you think they got me nervous? Oh guys, <laughs> and steep roads, <laughs> like steep exposed roads. Hi, hello. This might be a Wow. Yeah, this is chill. We got the perfect timing for the hot waters. If we were like 15 minutes later, we would already catch this rain. Now we just uh, decided to drive out but because there's a, a little canyon that we have to cross here. It's quite exposed uh, and on these gravel roads it's, uh, I think it's, it's more comfortable to drive when it hasn't rained on the road for two hours and yeah. it's completely soaked and wet. But the rain disappears as soon as it came and the road is super beautiful. And then we're back on the Ruta Cuarenta. That connects Argentina for 5,000 kilometers or so from the from the north to the south. And uh, in this area here, we just look. The next gas station is in 200 kilometers. Oh my God! It's so dark. Ah, Mrs. Helen is learning how to do with the camera. wind in here a lot except for not right now it is completely perfectly wind still <laughs> I sort of got it was just a couple minutes ago and now we're going across the canyon where we're gonna enter a cave 
with paintings from 9,000 years ago. That's very old. Over thousands of years, the historic hunter-gatherer communities that roamed this canyon have put their hands on the rock and sprayed paint around them, creating a negative of their hands along the overhanging cliffs and the Cueva de los Manos, the cave of the hands that is now a UNESCO World Heritage. There is also images of guanacos and hunting scenes on display. Imagining how people stood exactly where we now stand 13,000 years ago carries a deep, almost transcendental feeling. Although very little is known about these people that roamed the canyon, it is believed that they wanted to create something that lasts. 13,000 years later, humans still admire their art, but we will most likely never gain an understanding about who they really were. So that was windy, huh? <sighs> that was a windy height. Listen to it. Super nice, eh? Yeah. It's crazy to see life like in front of you. The hands, literally the hands. Of ten thousand years of ago. People ten thousand years ago. Like they touched it there, literally, and it's just in front of your eyes. And you imagine like and the craziest thing to me I think it's that they can't really explain everything. Like there is no way that we can really know what are these hands for, who did it, why they did it. Holy shit. <gasps> I'm so afraid the car would just uh, Mind if I open this? <laughs> By the way, this is something I bought in El Bolson. It's a city full of hippies doing their little art and I love it. And this is a guy that makes drawings out of wood. This is the sun. And I thought it was cute. Oh shit, I forgot to ask the difference between Lema, Alpaca and Guanaco. Guanaco, right? Yeah. Well, they're almost there here, they call them guanacos. Which is because they actually are guanacos. Yes, they do look a bit funny sometimes, but they are tough, beautiful lashes too. As we learn later today, guanacos are the wild form of the domesticated llama. These are living more in the southern part of the Andes, whereas vicuñas are the wild form of the domesticated alpaca, both of which are found more in the northern Andes and in higher areas. This is a very weird way to end the vlog, but so be it. And that's gonna be the last video you're gonna have with me. <laughs> oh, baby. In the next episode, we encounter an ancient animal, <laughs> Elena rescues a shoe, we have an icy breakfast, and we hike on a glacier. Click subscribe and come follow along.